On today's episode of All View For You, we explore mental health and diet. Hi, good day everyone. I am Nandini Samuel. As mentioned before, I am a registered dietitian of Trinidad and Tobago, and I am here with you for another session on diet and nutrition. In today's episode, I will be speaking about how diet affects our mental health. How does diet affect mental health? Historically, nutrition has been overlooked as a contributor to poor mental health and there is an increasing focus on this relationship. Think about it this way. Your brain is a highly metabolic organ. It's always on. It uses a lot of energy, a lot of nutrients. So you would want to give it that constant supply of fuel to function. However, not just any fuel. Just like an expensive car, you'd want to give it that good quality fuel. Similarly with your brain, you would want to give the good quality nutrition. So what is in the fuel is what makes the difference. So yes, food plays an essential role in our mental health. In the same way we think about it playing a role in our cardiovascular health, gastrointestinal health, and even the management of our blood sugar and so on. Research is currently showing that healthier dietary patterns can actually decrease the risk of depression, anxiety, and even mood changes. Recently, we have an emerging field of research on something called nutritional psychology or psychiatry, which is basically the study of the role of nutrition, whether it's dietary patterns, broad-based nutrient supplements, or specific vitamins and minerals on our mental health. What is actually becoming clearer is the fact that whatever we eat tend to affect the way we feel, and how we feel also tend to affect the way we eat. So there is that type of inverse relationship. In a recent study investigating the relationship between diet and mental health in a young adult college population actually showed that lower fruit and vegetable intake in addition to a high sugar consumption were associated with a higher frequency of depression and anxiety symptoms as well as mood changes. Another study is showing that traditional diets reduce the risk of depression and anxiety by 25-30%. to 30%. This is because traditional diets are high in fruits, vegetables, unprocessed grain, fish and seafood, but only modest amount of lean meats and dairy, as well as moderate alcohol consumption. Conversely, a western type diet or diet high in processed foods is showing the complete opposite, where persons are more at risk for developing the symptoms of depression and anxiety. Maybe in future lectures, I can go into specific vitamins and minerals. And as you always hear the phrase, you are what you eat. So whatever you put into your bodies can not only have an impact on you physically, but mentally as well. What can an individual do to improve their mental health via diet? theory states we eat good to look good so that we can feel good so from a nutritional perspective and from what research is showing number one we want to limit the amount of processed foods we are having so a simple switch could be having natural peas and beans instead of the canned ones second point increase your intake of fruits and vegetables so try to have vegetables with all of your main meals whether it's raw or cooked as well as increase the amount of fruits you are having. So have fruits as your healthier snack options. And the third point, limit the amount of junk foods you are having. So I'm not saying do not have any donuts, cookies, ice cream or cake, but at the same point in time, you want to limit how much you are having and the frequency in which you are having them. So you do not want to have donuts every day and five donuts at the same point in time. Instead, remember to have a healthier option. So for instance, you can have fruits, fruit smoothies, or simply yogurt with granola. All in all, have a healthy, well-balanced diet. And you can do this by having a variety of foods from the Caribbean six food groups on a daily basis to give your body the energy that it needs to function. Just a reminder, our Caribbean six food groups are staples, legumes, food from animals, fruits, vegetables, and fats and oils. So you don't want to just focus on one particular group, but all of them. 
How does exercise affect your mental health? There is growing evidence that exercise has not only protective effects on our physical health, but our mental health as well. Particularly depression, anxiety, as well as mood changes. The World Health Organization recommends at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week for persons between the ages of 18 and 64 years old. Now, moderate intensity exercise can take the form of dancing, swimming, or simply brisk walking. So remember, stay active as exercise is not only good for your body, but for your brain as well. What would you recommend for those writing exams? The first and most important point, do not skip breakfast or any meals in particular. Give your brain that adequate amount of nutritional energy that it needs to function at its best. Secondly, have nutrient rich foods. Diets that are high in refined sugars tend to be harmful to your brain as well as impair its functions. So remember, have healthier meal and snack options. Thirdly, keep hydrated. Have sufficient water intake, at least six to eight glasses of water per day. Number four, yes, caffeine is good to help keep you alert. However, it has dehydrating properties. So try to limit your caffeine intake per day. And the fifth and final point, get adequate rest at least six to eight hours of sleep per night. I know it's difficult to try to maximize the amount of hours you want to spend on studying. However, your brain and your body needs that rest as well. In conclusion, just remember, every time you eat, there is an opportunity to nourish your body. The most powerful tool that you have to transform your health is your spoon or fork. So having said that, I would like to say thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, share and subscribe as well as like the alumni page for more information and updates as it pertains to this important initiative. To participate in our view for you, email admin at wssalumni.org.